So Dad, what's your PhD about? I'm going to get sick of answering this question, I think. Welcome back to another installment of Professor in Progress. If you missed the last episode, you can check it out up here. I asked some people around campus what they thought about anthropology and explain what it means to me. So, now that we're on the same page regarding the discipline, today I'm going to talk a bit about my project specifically. What it's about, where I'll be going, what I'll be doing, etc. I don't really have a title at this stage. On the other hand, I have several. Let's see. Maintaining indigeneity beyond conversion. Christianity as incompatible with traditional ecological knowledge in Korean campaigns for community forestry in Northern Thailand. The state and the church in the village. Identity formation in a Christian Thai Korean village. That last one is the most current, but I'm sure it will change again. And that's okay. You see, anthropological research based primarily on participant observation is inherently adaptable and somewhat unpredictable. The things that we go there to research may not pan out, or other things we hadn't considered may yield really great data that we can write books about for the rest of our career. Having said that, it's not like we just rock up in any old place and hope for the best. As you can see from my tentative titles, there are certain features about Karen life in Thailand that I deem more worthy of immediate investigation than others. I won't try and formulate a single really clear research question today, because if I'm being honest, I haven't really totally pinned one down just yet. I um, filled out so many forms in the last few months, I'm kind of getting sick of pretending that I'm completely on top of this and 100% certain of myself, because uh, I'm not really. It's getting there though, and give me a couple months and hopefully I'll be much better at succinctly explaining my project to people. For this video, I'm gonna give you four things that I plan on collecting data on, and then I'll just cover briefly roughly where I'm going and sort of what I'll be doing there. First point of interest is a carryover from my honors thesis that I wrote in 2012, no longer likely central to this project, but it's still something that I'm gonna suss out as a possible set of problems for me to tackle. So this relates to forestry and agriculture and the identity politics that come into play when the government asserts control over these realms in the highlands of northern Thailand. I may talk at more length about this in a later video just about my honours project, but in a nutshell, the government and significant numbers of Karen farmers disagree about the methods of farming and forest management that are and are not sustainable. This leads to insecurity of land tenure, risks to the environment, and potentially jeopardizes Korean cultural traditions that are tied up with the ways that they engage with their land. The anthropological literature is really interested in how these issues result in people strategically presenting themselves to portray a certain kind of identity. Second point of interest is Christianity. As you may be aware, Thailand is predominantly a Buddhist country, uh, but many Karen, as many as 30%, according to some research, um, are Christian. Uh, typically either Baptist or Catholic. This is interesting anthropologically because it makes many Karen not just an ethnic minority but also a religious minority in Thailand. And begs the question, is this compounding of minority status seen by these people as a positive or a negative? And keep in mind that Thailand was never colonized, so the administration never officially backed any mass conversions to Christianity. Um, so this conversion of the Quran to Christianity is a relatively recent and locally driven effort. Third point of interest is education. This is stemming largely from my experience teaching English in Thailand in 2013. I'll cover that in more detail at a later date. What I'm interested in here though is that in many rural villages, the local school is the only state institution that's present in people's everyday lives. In Thailand, school teachers are considered public servants and so there's a level of respect and decorum that comes with the job uh, that's quite different to the way teachers are perceived in Australia, for example. I'm really interested in how this outside thing contributes to shaping the cultural identity of Karen children who speak a different language at home most of the time and often will drop out of school after primary school for a number of reasons. Fourth point of interest is everything else. A big part of participant observation is just hanging out with people and joining in with whatever it is that they're doing. Uh, so I can't really predict all of the possible crazy adventures I'll get up to with my informants. 
One thing I'll be paying close attention to as a relevant side of social activity is virtual spaces. Lots more people have smartphones since most of the existing literature was researched, so that means greater access to internet, um, and, and that brings with it a whole range of interaction between communities and different forms of communication within the community. Um, so a lot of really new ethnography is focusing on this stuff a lot. and It's something I'm really passionate about. It's becoming apparent that a unifying theme for all this could be kids. Focusing on how Karen youths are uh, socialised into Thai society could possibly bring me to all of these points of interest that I'm thinking about at the moment. Now, in order to protect the anonymity of my future informants, I can't reveal exactly the village I'll be going to, uh, although if you know me personally, you may already be familiar with it. Although I haven't locked anything in yet, it's quite likely that I'll be going back to the same village where I taught English previously, um, or at the very least, I'll be in the same area as that. I can show you the district I'll be in though, as there's a whole range of villages there that I could possibly be going to. So this map of Myanmar is courtesy of Luke, who I share an office with. Uh, fortunately, my neck of the woods in Thailand is pretty close to the border. Um, so if you're not familiar with Thailand, what it looks like, um, there's also a bit jutting out here, and there's a peninsula down the bottom here where all the beach parties are at. So I'll be arriving here in Bangkok in early 2017 and organising some stuff there. Then I'll be heading up to Chiang Mai in the north, which is up here. There we go. And meeting some key people in Chiang Mai, particularly anthropology people at Chiang Mai University, which should be interesting. And from there, I may go via Mei Hong Song if there's anyone important there for me to meet. So that's up here. Um, and that's because Mei Hong Song is the province that I will be doing my research in. The way place names work in Thailand, by the way, is that the capital city of each province shares the name of the province. So Chiang Mai City is the capital city of Chiang Mai province. The next division down from the province is the district, and that follows the same naming pattern. Um, so the district within Mei Hong Son that I'll be in is Melanoi, which you can see down here. Um, so just like this kind of general area is Melanoi district surrounding the city of Melanoi there. Well, it's a city is a bit of a stretch. It's a pretty small place, but that's the capital of that district. I won't know my exact routine until I get there, but basically I'll be living in a homestay type situation in one of the local households. Uh, I'll do some structured interviews and probably take some kind of a village census. Most of my data gathering will be just me hanging out with people and taking notes though. I'll be doing that in a way that sees me going to people's homes, into classrooms at the school, attending church services on Sundays, maybe going to the market in Malinois, um, going to people's fields when they're weeding, planting, harvesting, etc. Attending weddings, funerals, any other big events that might be going on in the village. Once I'm there, I'll make dedicated videos for all the different methods I'll be using and in the different contexts that I'll be using them. Um, and I'll report on how they work out for me in practice. This has been long enough already for today though, so we'll leave it here. Um, if you want to keep up with how the project's coming along, please click subscribe. And thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.